Hello, welcome back to IT Security Labs. And this is one of my weekly updates on my journey to getting CISSP certified. For those who have started with me a few weeks ago, I decided that I'm going to go and get CISSP certified. My primary books are the official study guide that I'm holding right here. This is for the Certified Information Systems Security Professional Certification. This is a certification by ISC Squared and this is my week 4 update. Today I'm going to tell you about my struggles from last week because this journey, as many of you know, is definitely not easy. Last week was Easter, so uh, because of that I was very busy with family and other responsibilities. And that's the challenges that a lot of people also face with this journey is that you have your full-time job like myself and in addition to that, your family commitments and everything. But there is always that motivation, that goal that you always have in staying on top of things that will keep you going. So today I'm going to share with you guys in an honest and short uh, video about uh, my struggles from last week. I was definitely busy. I was definitely stressed out about, about other things and um, I did not actually end up practicing using this uh, practice guide. I did however attend uh, the FR Secure uh, webinars. I mentioned those in my previous video if you haven't seen that. Uh, the FR Secure videos are, uh, webinars are wonderful. I've been uh, in th those things. We have had about three sessions with FR Secure. That's the mentorship program where uh, the company is teaching us some principles about uh, CISSP and they also help with uh, getting certified and if you need any endorsements, you have to send them your resume. So it's a wonderful program and I highly suggest it for anyone who wants to start and is still early. You can always look them up and I'll have a link in the description for those who want to attend. But uh, back to my journey, Last week uh, was challenging. Uh, my goal was to attack uh, domain number two, asset security. And I had no idea how much information this stuff is. There's a lot of information to memorize. Uh, I love to do things. I like to create dashboards like this, as you can see in the back. That's my live uh, lab right now. That's what I do. I don't do memorization. So last week I was a lot of information to memorize. I had to memorize security models, all the different models and what they are all about and also be able to remember those in the, over the next 12 weeks when I go to the exam. So I have to continuously practice and practice to remember things like that. But I also realized that they also want you to define certain basic terms like what is a vulnerability, what is a threat, do you know the difference between a vulnerability and a threat, which I think uh, is kind of silly but also at the same time if you have been in the, in the industry, you should at least be able to define and distinguish those different things. And um, we, we even covered physical security which I think is also wonderful because sometimes as security professionals we can be stuck with uh, thinking about technical stuff and we forget that sometimes having a uh, physical security to the building for example can actually be that door that attackers can use someone can show up and set up a rogue uh, AP so being able to secure your ports like the physical ports on the walls is something that you need to think about and uh, I think uh, I'm finding that the material for the most part uh, is valuable but there is a lot of information that needs to be covered and I need to practice with my memory, being able to remember these things and also being able to actually uh, retain the material and use it at work is something that's very important for me. So right now I think uh, as far as uh, domain two asset security, I think for the most part I knew a lot of the things that were there talking about uh, network security, network vulnerabilities, those are the things that I worry about in the networks that I'm in charge of. So that wasn't really hard. I was very familiar with that. But the whole program looks like it's very, very, very detailed. There's a lot of information that's very shallow on the other hand, but also a lot of information to cover and I have to memorize that. And so that, that's what I've been doing. I didn't cover much in this book, but my goal is to keep up with the practice book. This is the office, official practice questions that I'm hoping to cover with and in addition to that 
I did read these chapters. This is what I do before I go to bed. So this was very simple and straightforward. I was able to stay on top of my uh, reading. I also have been having a lot of fun. I miss being technical, even though I do that at work every day. I also love to lab. My channel is mostly about my labs. So I've uh, decided to play with Ubiquity. I'll be pretty much dismissing all my Cisco gear to play with Ubiquity. I have already moved to PFSense. I have graphs like this one in my lab. And I, I'm also, uh, I also created a video that you can see that shows you uh, the kind of information that I'm finding. I enjoy playing with firewalls, being able to manipulate firewall rules, being able to actually grab information from firewalls and try to make sense of it, especially if you can actually analyze information. So that's why I have PFSense. I've been playing with uh, Ntop NG. I'm a big fan. I'm, I'll probably be buying the uh, pro version of that. And my PFSense is running on this hardware. For anyone who is wondering, this is a super micro and I'll have all the specs in the description. But it's pretty much a um, super micro server, nothing fancy, and a few cards in the back. PFSense runs great on this. I even have an SSD inside that is actually collecting all the data that I need. And for the, at the end of the day, I want to see what kind of traffic is my network getting. How can I analyze that traffic? How can I make smart decisions? Those are some of the things that I've been working on. And if you enjoyed these videos, please remember to subs subscribe. I do intend to go back and create more technical videos once I'm done with my studies. Right now, studying for the CISSP is my number one priority. So I'm not making any uh, technical videos. But once in a while, I might sneak one or two. So this week, I might actually uh, make an end of NG with PFSense and Grafana video, which I think will be very wonderful. So stay tuned for those. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next update next week.